Behind every successful businessman is a successful businesswoman, and Marta was Bella's successful businesswoman. Marta Caroli started off coaching primarily floor and beam choreography, but became more involved as their gym blossomed. During her time at the gym, many parents and gymnasts compared her maltreatment to Bella's. She was manipulative, controlling, degrading, mal, but also a great technical coach. And at the end of the day, parents believed that a little character wouldn't hurt anyone because their abuse was covered by the USGF. Marta, just like Bella, was good at playing favorites to promote healthy competition. Or so, parents thought was healthy. Marta would stretch girls in order, based upon their current ranking in the gym from a coach's standpoint. For instance, Christy Phillips was one that got stretched first with special treatment because at the time, she was at the top of her career. It was a way to denounce other gymnasts that weren't at the level that the Crowleys wanted them to be at. Joanne Ryan states, The Crowleys wanted the girls to battle each other out every day in the gym, and if one of his favorites messed up a routine, he would punish the other girls by making them do extra workouts. Marta was also degrading on both body image and weight. Dominique Mociano recalled that Marta was very controlling when she would be around food at competitions. Mociano states, Crowley's watched every bite that I had while at meets, while they ate whatever they wanted right in front of me. I remember drooling over warm breads that they would eat for lunch and dinner, but they made it clear that I was never to touch the bread baskets. I love food, and it only became more of an obsession when I wasn't allowed to have it. Of course, this behavior would only intensify gymnast eating disorders and poor images by singling out their option to eat what they want to. And Marta also refused medical help and found injuries as weak and lazy. One of Mociano's worst memories was one practice when her leg collapsed. Marta made a disgusted face at me. What are you doing? Playing a fool? Bella said to me. Marta purposely walked towards me and silently squeezed the back of my neck, digging her fingers in tightly, as she often did when she was upset with me, and began pushing me towards her office door. Okay, let's call your parents. Maybe your leg is broken, Marta yelled loudly. I found out later from x-rays that although not a problem, I had a four centimeter stress fracture in my right tibia five weeks before the 96 Olympics. Marta also net picked her gymnasts, making status more important to the gymnasts than their performance. Body types had to be small and slender, like they had coached in Romania. Meals were small and scarce, like they were able to get away with in Romania. Yelling was tolerated, and you were on good terms with Marta if you complied. And another way to be on good status with Marta was showing up early. If someone were to show up on time, they were considered late and would be punished later on. Amy Chow's coaches were not going to deal with this. As Mociano states, I always admired the relationship Amy had with her coaches, Diane Amos and Mark Young from West Valley Gymnastics Club. In my opinion, Diane and Mark did an excellent job at protecting Amy from overtraining and allowed her proper rest to let her body recover so she'd be healthy and strong for competition. But one day, Marta started practice five minutes early. When Amy and her coaches walked into the gym, a few weeks before the Olympics, Marta got very angry because she thought Amy was late. Amy, you're late, Marta yelled, leaving Amy startled by how mad Marta was, causing Amy to cry. Before Amy could say anything else, Diane put Marta in her place. Don't you ever yell at my athlete or treat her like that way. She is not late. You started early. Diane was livid that Marta upset Amy by yelling at her, something Amy was not used to. After the 1996 Olympics, Ballad finally had it with the route the organization was heading. Bella felt that the sport had lost its touch, and he was fed up with the political disputes that had happened over the past two Olympics. Angry and exhausted, he officially announced that he would retire from the sport after the 96 Olympics. People were shocked because at the time, he was the best coach in America. How could we survive without him? But on the other hand, he was an insensitive man that would regularly yell at judges at national and international meets. 
He would pick fights with commentators and had regular feuds with local coaches. Behind his talented gymnast, the only thing he had was giving the organization a bad image. But things changed once he left. Team USA went through a funk and their performance didn't improve. They began losing at international meets. Terry Walker, a U.S. coach who currently works at World Champion Center, once said, The problem was, Marta and Bella had retired and we didn't have anybody pushing us. He said, referring to the 1997 to 2000 quadrillennium, there wasn't a driving force. The USGF contacted Bella Caroli, asking if he would be interested in taking on a new position. No longer would he be ignored by the politics of the organization because he would be above them. They asked Bella in 1999 if he could be the new national team coordinator. He would revamp the program by being a part in the selection process and having a say in how the organization would flow. Bella agreed and entered the gymnastics scene again. Since 1999, the Americans have experimented with a version of the Eastern German system, with selecting top athletes and their coaches to attend monthly national team training camps at the Caroli Ranch. The Corollis would sell their gym in Houston and move to the ranch full-time. They would transform their ranch into a world-class gymnastics facility and host monthly camps there. Though this phase would not last long, Bella, just as everyone had seen in the past, would give USGF a bad image while in office. Bella didn't let the gymnast stay in the Olympic Village or participate in the opening ceremony in 2000. There were issues with how Caroli picked a squad and how he treated young women. One of them, Jimmy Dancer, called Caroli a puppeteer who took credit for any of the team's success and no blame for its failure. Dominique Dawes, a holdover from 1996, was also critical of Bella at the games. Bella was very emotionally abusive to the 2000 team when they got fourth at team event. On the 30 for 30 documentary, teammates stated that he blamed their injuries, performance, and personal coaches for the failure, stating that the girls didn't want it enough. The 2000 games took its toll on Bella. He was demanding, angry, and vicious to both coach and athlete. Rita Brown yelled at Bella Caroli at the end of the 2000 Olympics when he blamed the coaches for the gymnast's poor performance. She yelled back, No, this is also your fault. You're the Olympic coordinator. The USGF was appalled when numerous people voiced their concerns of Bella being in office. So, things changed. And in 2001, Marta Caroli was hired after Bella Caroli retired following the 2000 controversy at the Olympics. Bella would still attend camps and assist Marta with the organization, but he would step down and allow Marta to run things instead. That's when Marta's career took off, and she became known as a legend. At the 2002 Worlds, America would finish with more gold than Russia. At the 2003 Worlds, America would finish first in team finals. And then in 2004, Carly Patterson would receive all-around gold at the Summer Games. People were pleased with Marta's role while in power because they believed that she was the one leading the show to success. Over the years, commentators and fans would picture Marta above a pedestal with her crowd like a queen with gymnasts bowing to her every correction. At times, NBC made Marta, not the gymnast, the star of its domestic gymnastics coverage. The commentators frequently wondered on air what Marta's thinking. Who does she like? Whom will she choose for the next Olympic team? During training sessions at major national competitions, the media and spectators pay nearly as much attention to Marta observing the gymnasts as they do the gymnasts themselves when they compete. 